Hello again, so Broken here, and in this video series, we're going to be looking at the basic skills required to survive in Player Unknown's Battle Royale, a mod for Armor 3. This video is about the initial choices you make before you even begin to parachute. Seriously, there are a lot of things you can do before the game to make your odds better. There will be many more videos coming soon covering all aspects of this game mode, so make sure to subscribe to catch all these as soon as they're released. So the first decision you will have to make is what type of server you want to play in. There are two different types of servers with two different sub-servers in them, each catering to a particular playstyle. These are regular and hardcore. Don't get put off by the names though, because they're basically the same. Why do I prefer hardcore I hear you say? Well let me tell you why. On regular mode, people exploit the third person camera which allows them to see over and around walls and other objects. This means that they can be sat in a building, just sat below a window, completely hidden from view, but they can see you coming from a long way away. In the clip you can see right now, I'm actually demonstrating the third person camera exploit. You can see, I can see out of the windows and if someone was to be in my line of sight they would not be able to see me. All I'd have to do is just pop up and shoot them and they would have stood no chance whatsoever. I don't really think that's fair and it's not really realistic either, so that's why I play hardcore. On hardcore mode, I would literally have to be stood in the window to be able to see them, which means that they could see me. At least they would have stood a little bit of a chance. So I mentioned there are two sub-server modes within regular and hardcore, but what are they I hear you ask? Well, they're standard and ranked. The only difference between the game modes is that in standard you can team up with your friends or with other people that you meet in the game. In this type of server you don't gain any stats towards the global leaderboards, but if you've got a group of friends then why not play a game with them, it's good. If you're on your own though, it's not bad either because nothing is more satisfying than taking out a group who thought that they had you. Ranked servers however are solo play only and will result in a ban if you break these rules. Over on the website they actually have a match tracker and you can see your movements along with other player movements, so don't break the rules, they will find you out. Kills time survived and wins all go towards your global score in this game mode so if you care about stats or you want to get away from other groups then ranked is the place for you so now you've made your choice on what server type to choose it's time to win lots and lots of games yeah well not quite unless you're really lucky. There are a few handy pieces of advice I will share with you which should increase your odds of survival a little but at the end it does come down to your shooting skill. Okay so there are three stages to think about once you enter the game lobby. What is the spawn zone? Where are you going to land? And how are you going to survive? By thinking about these things you will know what you're going to do before you are thrown out of the back of this C-130 which makes things easier from this point onwards. So let's take each map one by one and decide where to land. On the map Altus there is a big black circle drawn on the map. You can use this because this shows you where you're going to be dropped out of the C-130. You will be somewhere within the circle, but it's not precise really. It's also worth noting that the blue circle that you have to keep within will also spawn within this black circle. Handy to know, yeah? So now you know where you're likely to spawn, what you want to do is identify key areas that you wish to land, such as military complexes and towns. If you're on regular and you press shift and click, whilst on the map screen, you'll be able to see the distance between you and that point. This is useful for when you're in the air to see if you're close to your marker. I have another video about parachuting coming out soon, so be sure to check it out and see how far you can actually travel whilst parachuting. On the map Stratus, you usually spawn around Air Station Mike. That's good to know, right? Yeah, actually it is. It shows that you do have a limited range where you can land, but you can come up with a method for each time you play the map. There are still plenty of options though for you to choose from. On the map Boscada, you don't have an indication of where you will spawn, but by deciding on what point of interest you want to go to beforehand, it will make your decision making in the air a little bit faster. I would recommend looking for built up areas on the map whilst you are parachuting. Wake Island is mostly blind luck. You get dropped in and you can't look at your map until you are most of the way to the ground. You can open your parachute at the earliest opportunity, but unless you can see what is actually below you, you may risk losing out on a decent spawn. You may be dropping into a military complex, or on the flip side, dropping into the middle of nowhere, which means that opening the parachute as high as possible would have been the best play. I have yet to get decent FPS on the Tanoa map, so can't comment on it, but in the new year I will will be posting a video specifically on that map. Like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. The next video for Battle Royale will show you how to parachute and survive the initial few minutes. 